Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block, it's that pizza that you need. First off, I want to let you know that next weekend, I will be at Irvine Improv in Irvine, California, January 18th through the 20th. So come on out and get that action. Today's guest, uh, he started off as a YouTube content creator when he was in college, and then he really escalated into some different style activities as the star of American Vandal Season 1. Uh, he's now in films. He was in 22 Jump Street. He's doing all types of precious activities. And also he, um, what else was I going to say? And also, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jimmy Tatro. And I've never met you before, man, but we have a mutual friend, Dan Legan. We do. I was just texting him, actually. Were you? Yeah. He was like, uh, he was like talking about you to me. He was like, I feel like you'd get along with my buddy Theo, man. Oh, that's nice of him. Yeah. And I was like, wait, I think I, and I was like, right when I had just gotten like the, the podcast thing through my inbox and I was like, oh, I think I just got the, I think I just, I just got, got hit up about his podcast. Just got, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah, man. Yeah. Our booker actually is, uh, is in a new movie. Did he tell you about that in the hallway? No, I didn't. I didn't tell him that. No. He's in a new movie with Octavia Spencer coming out. Who does? So our booker is Gianni. Oh, nice. Him. I was so, one. I was like, we need Jimmy on. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Nice. So, but for now, he's our booker and he's unpaid. <laughs> so, <laughs> now that's where we're at with him. You nice, know, yeah. we don't, obviously, we don't let his agent interfere on how we handle business with him, you know, because <laughs> we probably have to pay more. Um, right. But no, you know, yeah, Johnny uh, helped uh, us have you and we're happy to have you, man. Nice, man. Yeah. We're well, happy to be y here. Yeah. But yeah, Dan is a wild guy. So, Dan was one of the producers for Vandal. Yeah, yeah. He was a showrunner. Yeah, and he. Uh, at first, I was, I was like, "Who is this guy?" He's yeah, like super. You know, he was like talking about everything on such a deep level about. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, "Who is this dude?" And then he, st I started to really like get to know him, and I was like, "Oh, this guy knows what's up." Yeah, he's he's good. He's good at that. Yeah, he kind of looks like a strongest fucking nine year old ever. Kind of. <laughs> You know, he does. and his mom takes care of him like a like a nine year old that was taken care of by his mother. Right. You know, like has a lunch. You uh -huh. know, like that guy. You know, yeah. his sandwich is cut in a fours. You know, right, right. like he already knows in the morning what kind of like flavor of beverage he's gonna have at school at lunch. <laughs> you know, I never had like that level of care put into my lunches. Really? Like, I mean, it's not like my parents didn't care. They did their best. You know. Right. But like, I was never getting like these big elaborate turkey sandwiches like a lamb like, or something it was like a pb and j yeah you know? that's maybe some chips or just j one time i just got a whole bunch of j and i was just like j? <laughs> yeah i've never heard of just j usually it would be just pb oh like. yeah if PB, you're a... I, you know what i got into for a while in elementary school was pb and honey oh yeah that was great because the honey kind of like makes a little bit of the bread kind of hard or right. like just kind of really coagulates in there it was and it was like a nice switch up when you got too used to the pb and j yeah you're like we got to fucking change our lives yeah dude i remember speaking of college i remember eating some mushrooms one speaking time of college. and um <laughs> yeah and, and and of having things to eat I ate some mushrooms one time and I got so excited because I met this girl, this kind of not, you know, I think she was white or maybe Spanish or something, but she was about five, seven. And so I met her and I was excited. I was on mushrooms at this party. I got her phone number, bro. This is a girl who in my imagination would never talk to me. Right. Like I'd imagined thousands of ways that I approached her and every imaginatory time it didn't end well for me you know? <laughs> okay, yeah like one time I was even on a ship and she was like you know kidnapped and stuff and still nah -uh, you know <laughs> yeah it was like hey I'll get you out of here and she's like oh, I'll just stay with the kidnappers um <laughs> so every experience I even had you know hypothetically hadn't gone well I got her number and I was like man I'm fucking 
living on large, you know? Yeah. I'm one of God's favorites right now. And I just got beeline, ran out of this party over. They had a fence, like a chain link fence. And I try, I'm like, I'm going to prove to this girl I'm a fucking man, right? She didn't even know why I'm doing this. So I just, <laughs> just beeline right for this chain link fence, probably about five feet, and try to just jump over it, like stomach first, right? My hand got caught on the chain link, ripped my hand open. So now my hand's open. I'm bleeding everywhere. Everybody's alarmed. Um, I don't know what happened to her, but anyway, so my friends are like, we need to go to the hospital. <laughs> and one of my friends is like, well, dude, here's what you can do to better take care of yourself because you're bleeding everywhere. Put your mouth over the cut and suck. Keep the blood in your body. <laughs> right. Swallow the blood. Yeah. So I've heard then that. I had the mouth, I had my hand over the cut and I was basically just sucking. Like I was like my arm was a straw. And I, oh. I could feel it, yeah. I could feel more blood coming from my heart. Like and I'm just, just drinking it. Just going Yeah. Just like this. Yeah. So yeah, when it, when you talk about eating, you know, kind of wild stuff in college or something like that, or having a wild <laughs> snack. Yeah. But that was a tough time for me that time, but where'd you go to college? I went to Louisiana State. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you went to USC, you went to school out here, huh? No, I went to University of Arizona. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Bear down, bro. I yeah. used to live on Colbin Pantano, dude. Wow. Yeah, I I went there for one year. Nice. Yeah. Okay. It was pretty good. It it's was not I, ASU. That's what I thought of it as. Oh, really? I, I mean, I fucking hate ASU. So you you're did? Me the wrong now, guy. why? Because they were what? The rich kids, fancy? No, I think they were definitely less fancy than you were there. They just were, they were the bad guys in that rivalry. You yeah. know, they were our rivals. They're the sun devils. Yeah. So you already know who the bad guys are. Yeah. There's like 100,000 kids there. Oh, yeah. We were kids like go the, missing there all the time and nobody cares even. It's like a town. Yeah. ASU is like a, like a, not even a small town. Like 100,000 people. That's a decent sized city. They got the tits. They got the coke up there. Yeah, they got it all. I mean, it's the coke <laughs> belt. I mean, it's definitely the cocaine belt, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Runs right through kind of Scottsdale. Um, but now U of A, dude, I remember it's a good place to get like a couple of, you know, magical crystals. You know, it's a good place to get some turquoise. Dude, I saw a school bus there one time. Somebody had completely cut the top of it off and was just driving it, bro. Really? Yeah. That's some Tucson stuff right Yeah, it's there. totally Tucson. You know, it's Tucson like, is a wild place. Yeah, what is it? It's just the armpit of America. That's what they call it. Yeah, but it's like the armpit is braided and has some fucking turquoise barrettes. <laughs> right, like, right. Some beads you know? in there. Yeah, the armpit has a dream catcher hanging yeah. out of it. You know? <laughs> a lot of fucking dream catchers yeah. over there. You know? <laughs> so, dude, you really struck it big out here in Hollywood. Um, I, I mean, sure. I'm trying. I'm doing right. my best. Yeah. And does it feel like, was there a moment in your life when you started to realize like what it was like to just be like a popularity was like, oh, this is getting to another level and how quickly it escalated? Yeah. Well, there was like in college, that was like the peak of my fame. Like I was like when I was making videos about college in college, Wow, that was when it was like. Like, I don't experience that kind of stuff now, right. obviously, because we're in L.A. and no one gives a shit out in L.A., yeah. like, which is which is honestly cool because, like, it's not fun. Yeah. But, like, you know, when I would go to, like, I remember I, sh I was shooting a movie in uh, New Orleans and... Uh, the Jump Street? Yeah, Jump Street. Yeah. And it was when LSU played Florida. Oh, yeah. Like, everyone was on bourbon. And I just remember, like... I just was straight up getting mobbed. Like yeah. I remember like standing on bourbon and like one person was like, Oh my God, let me get a photo. And then like the second a flash went off, it was like, all of a sudden there was like, like 40 kids. Yeah. And I like, couldn't escape. I like, I was like, I was like running. Yeah. I was like, I felt like I was like Justin Bieber or some shit. Yeah. And that was, I mean, that was like a one time, like that was just the craziest it's ever been. Or Justin boots. You ever seen those boots? <laughs> no. What are those? They're popular in the South too. You could be either one of those characters. Yeah. I would love it. Yeah. Justin boots. It's like nice boots. Do you think when, okay, so you had that experience, right? So I'll tell you this, uh, um, <laughs> Fousey, you ever seen that guy Fousey on YouTube? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I met this guy one time, and honestly, I thought he was a real fucking clown fuck. <laughs> but he just had a really ex intense ego. That's what I felt like about the young guy. And I think he got he, he he fraudulently made some videos that were like, you know, watch this butterfly hug this homeless guy, you know? Yeah, I mean. You know, see what happens when this seven, <laughs> when the seven-month-old baby crawls past this homeless guy, you know? Like, that, th those kind of videos always, he did those, like, you know, 
videos that kind of fed into that whole clickbaity thing. Yeah, and it was fake though. It was like it was prearranged. Where it was like a thumbnail like this. Yeah. And it's like I can't believe she said that. Yeah. You know. It's like guess who gets leprosy, and it's just like <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. It's a, it's a guy like in a blanket <laughs> on the street. You're like, <laughs> you're like fuck this, but I'm gonna <laughs> click it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely like some wild stuff. But I, Roman Atwood was a buddy of mine too, right? He's great. And Roman is great. Is is like you know he's. Super, you know, him and Dennis Rohde, super cool cats. But I, the most fame I'd ever seen somebody have from a fan perspective was seeing, um, it was Fousey outside of the parking lot in the improv. We shot something one time, and it was just, I'd yeah. never seen anything like it. It was like 400 kids, all the phones going, like in a mob, like literally. Jesus. It was unbelievable. Did he like let people know he was there he must have he must have said you know i'm shooting something here i'll come outside and say hey or something yeah yeah so it was pre-arranged because like a lot of people do that like i used to see like you know dj khaled was all about that for a while like i'm gonna be it like he'd be right. like i have a meeting yeah. at this place like Show come up. through yeah. to my meeting i'm like if i was meeting up with <laughs> yeah. dj khaled and like all of a sudden there's a thousand people outside i'd be like maybe don't Tweet out our address. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. I'm getting a bunion shaved off at 22nd and San Vicente. One. But yeah. then, like, you do that, and it makes you look way more famous than you are. Right. Where it's like, if that actually happened, and you know, like, like when someone like Bieber, or, like One Direction, is like staying at a hotel. Yeah. Like, you ever like drive by a, like a hotel on Sunset and just see like a mob of people outside? Yeah. And you're like, how do they? Like one person found out and like let everyone know, like all the fan accounts. Like, yeah, probably. They're staying here. There's message boards, and it's always like, yeah, somebody's outside and their hair is dyed like green and brown. <laughs> they all have green and yeah. all the hair colors, man. I used to go to VidCon. Mm -hmm. No normal colored hair. At VidCon. And what is VidCon? So tell me about what that is. VidCon is and like, be honest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> VidCon is like Comic Con mm -hmm. for. Um, screening 12 year old girls who are fans of YouTube channels. Okay, so now would you have like Grace Helbig and people like that there as well? Roman yeah, Atwood? Yeah, all like Roman types? Atwood would kill it at VidCon. Like, right. Um, Fousey would kill it at VidCon. Dukasons? You, uh, uh, who are those dudes? The, uh, the Dudesons? Dudesons, yeah. Juka Dudson? Juka Dudsons. They do oh, the them. Dudsons, yes. I've heard of the Dudsons. Right, they're, Slo they're Slovenian, but they're. Or there's something, I don't know, they're from fucking somewhere, but... It's like a you know. massive convention in Anaheim, okay. and you're walking around, and I mean, you, for the most part, have no idea who any of these people are, besides, like, you know, there's very, like, very few people on YouTube that are, like, in my same, like, age group slash people I would hang that out with. slash style, yeah. Yeah. It's maybe that one dude that's supposed to fight CM Punk. Who is that guy? Uh, Logan was it Logan Paul? Yeah, Logan Paul. Mm. It, it would be uh, you're older than him probably a little bit. A little bit, right? A little bit. And yeah, you, yeah, and he, yeah. It, it seems like that's more his life, and your life is is different now. Well, your like you know, you're just walking around, and you just all of a sudden you'll hear like like you'll hear waves of screams. Yeah, and you, they'll be like, oh, that's so and so. Yeah, and you're like who who? That's Snuffy Johansson. Over there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who well, does dude, the fucking, I, yeah. I couldn't go to these. Who makes things. the snail sweater? Cindy. I started getting big leagued by like Jif Palm. No, you know Jif Palm. Uh uh, is it an animal? Yeah, it's a little fuzzy. Is it really Pomeranian dog? Mm. Who's just a star at these things? And what's it? What's Jif's skill set? I mean, Jill, Jeff actually has some skills. Really? Like, you know, I would like, as much as I would like to sit here and hate on Jeff, <laughs> he can like walk on his hands. Oh, like, really? He can do some cool Are stuff. Are you serious? Yeah, he like poses for photos. Oh, that's like, cool. Yeah. Dude, I know a fucking, uh, yeah, I know a couple of dogs that have fucked that little thing up. <laughs> you know? Dude, you could probably hire a wolf to fucking sneak in there and eat little Jeff, bro. Dude, I I'll got eat beef that thing ass Jif. first, dude. I know a guy who could probably fuck a snack on that little bastard. How big is it? He's like this big. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's he's super cute. He's a cute little fuzzy dog. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was on a red carpet one time, and the guy said, they said, hey, that guy's going to interview. Go over there. And I walk over to him. And I'm like, just standing there. And the guy's like, not really like looking at me. He's like looking like past me. And I'm like standing there like, okay, they told me to like come get interviewed by this guy. And he's like, hey man, I'm so sorry. We're actually um, gonna interview Jif right now. So um, wow. I'm like, so <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask for this. 
you just yeah. told me to come over here and now I'm getting big leagued by a little dog. <laughs> I know. Like, that was rough, man. That was a tough. Well, the good thing is Jeff's only going to live probably most eight more, six more years. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, to be honest. But, dude, I, yeah, that's got to be baffling. Now, do, do, is there a little bit of ego in that where you're like, fuck, this is bullshit? I mean, you never want to feel like that because right. it's like, I don't like those things anyways. And right. it's like, I don't like want to get caught up in all that. But when someone tells you, go over there, get right. interviewed, and you're like, all right, I'm just going to go with the flow. And then you st- you get over there, and then the guy's like, ooh, actually, man? Yeah. As if I asked to get interviewed. Right. You know? Oh, I hate that. Yeah. Oh, and I'm sorry, like, dude, guy. I didn't ask to be here. Yeah, I don't now even you're fucking, fucking putting me in a position where like I'm getting flexed on by a little Pomeranian. Like, yeah. How do you on. interview a dog anyways? What do they do? Look at this thing. Oh, wow. He has that ball. <laughs> And they're showing a picture right now of Jif got a football. <laughs> and that's Jif? All things dog blog. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, see the picture above? See him st- walking on his hands? It's not. This isn't one of those Chinese dogs <laughs> that they give it the pills and its tongue hangs out of its mouth, is it? Have you they seen give those? those things pills? Yeah. There's a big a bunch of stuff now about... Will you look that up, do- Chinese doping um, cute animals or something? I don't know what you would search for. But yeah, they're giving them pills. That's why, uh, you know, they're all just tongue out of their I mouth. I thought that was just the type of dog. It just like was a sloppy no, little dude, thing. No, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. A dog's just been drinking all day? Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy just thinks there's like all these alcoholic dogs. <laughs> uh, no, but the Chinese have been doing a lot of that, I think. And I also, you know, who knows if that's... Who knows what they're doing. What are you seeing, Nick? I there haven't seen anything about the controversy, but here's uh, Ma- he Marnie the, the dog. You typed in Mammy the dog. <laughs> I, I knew it. I knew <laughs> Marnie the dog. That was Gianni. Gianni. I have a weird story how I know that, but yeah. Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> hey, you know Manny the dog. I mean, now that I'm looking at him, they definitely look like they could be drugged. Oh, dude, you see a Bichon on a couple of Quaaludes, bro. <laughs> you know, the game has changed for these animals. It's not the same as it used to be when you and I were young. They're um, born into this fame. They didn't ask for it. Yeah, yeah they didn't ask for it. <laughs> Um, well, what else is I was going to ask you about? So, so that was the type of fame that YouTube fame. There was nothing like that in a in a, in a unique way. Yeah, I mean, I think that was just like a unique time when, mm-hmm. like, I was. I mean, I it, it was it's you all were in timing. College. YouTube is all timing, you know. So, like, at the time, I was like one of the only people that was really doing sketch comedy, and no one was really doing like college sketch comedy except for maybe college humor but like by that point college humor had become like more like adult humor anyway yeah so like i don't know it was the it was just videos that like like i was the college guy right and then that night on bourbon street was like the biggest concentration of like every fan i've had wow was like those southern frat guys from lsu and florida state and they were all in one place and i was there. there and then once it was like someone shined a light it was like there he is like a roach like a beautiful roach <laughs> yeah but like that's not you know normal for me yeah yeah no that's a, you know what's funny man is it makes me think like whenever i was um you know when i before i even got into hollywood or got into stand-up i did a reality show right i was a road rules cast he used to have a show called road rules it was a show oh, really? where people traveled around and played games you know yeah and this was when they only had 32 television channels right and mtv was at its it was at its height like we the show got like 14 million views uh watches a week which now would be something you'd see on like a network like a you know like that's like walking dead numbers right? right so those are huge numbers but this is yeah and so i had an experience one night on bourbon street and i was there and it was um and it was i was in college around that time so it was basically like you know you go to any college town or any college bar and it was just you were this um you were really for me at that time it was more like you were a connection to mtv in a way for people like that's what i feel like they kind of thought like this is like a human embodiment of that channel because mtv was huge then like it was it was the it was our youtube it was everything all in one right one channel you know it was like youtube tmz it was all in one little space you know um but I had a crazy experience one night like that. Oh, dude, so one night in Louisiana, a lot of dudes would be assholes, too. This is one of the reasons oh, for sure. why I ended up leaving um, LSU was because a lot of kids would be fucking just rude. Like, kids always trying to fight, like, at the bars, just beer bottles just whizzing by my head, just, you know, 
I don't know, jealous or angry, ignorant. It's like just they just want to like, and, and I know you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like they just they don't want you to think that they like you, right? But they want to say something. Yeah. They don't know really how to say it or what they want to say. They just want to like let you know that they know who you are. Yes. But not that they like you. Right. <laughs> but I know what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah. You're that guy. Yeah. yeah. But don't fucking. I'm good. I mean, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Yeah, man. Look. I'm but a- I've. My boy has seen yeah. that show, <laughs> and he just said that you were maybe yeah, on it. Yeah, dude. Who the fuck are you, man? Yeah. Who the fuck are you, dude? <laughs> yeah. But that's such a big, bro, I, I know exactly. And then at a certain point, when you walk in a room, you can tell already where people know. You start to get that feeling like, okay, those two guys are already pointing me out. That person already <laughs> said this. These are the fucking pitfalls. They're going to swing over. They're going to flank me from the left for a photo <laughs> in about 19 seconds. But isn't it weird how that all becomes a little bit of a microcosm in some of those spaces? Yeah. No, it really does. It's, a it, weird, it's such a weird thing, too, like. That whole, I don't know, just the way pe- that you get approached. Like, a girl came up to me one time and was like, like all like bitchy. And was yeah, like, do you I hate like bitch. make YouTube videos? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, yeah. And she was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> all right. And then she like looked at me like, are you going to make me like you? Like, like yeah. that kind of a look. And I was just like, I just didn't say anything. I was like, yeah. And then she walked away like, yeah. What a dick! Yeah. <laughs> like, what was I supposed to do there? Yeah, I had no good. That's when I, I used to keep a little bit of bird seed for bitches like that. You know, <laughs> I'm like, this girl is nothing but a little pigeon. You know? Yeah. I say, you come get a little bit of this fucking bird seed. Right? <laughs> you know, I'll leave a little bit of seed on their shoulder. Even. <laughs> but yeah, you'd have all kind of yeah, like uh, I don't even know. I guess I'm supposed to get a picture with you. People say that kind of shit. You know, hey, like, don't can be I a like bitch. have a picture? Like my friend wants. My friend knows. Yeah. Who you are like can i just like have a picture my fucking friend yeah it's always the friend yeah and it's like well you seem like a bitch you don't even like your friend like what the fuck like <laughs> yeah, you don't like your friend yeah. You're, you don't like me so yeah yeah what are you doing <laughs> but it is interesting because you start to you, you do pick on some up on some people's social skills and what some of their social skills are like yeah but when i was at lsu like so one night i was at a bar at tulane over there in new orleans right and so what bar um that one bar that's right on campus the uh boot yes the boot yeah <laughs> it's a good time i was at the boot dude and i had fucking wet socks i remember because this is what happened Something's- is that a, is that a like a metaphor for something or you actually had wet socks <laughs> no. well wet socks is a racial slur in some areas <laughs> not here. um it is johnny why don't you laugh like a regular person huh but a decent like my laugh? huh no no one does dude <laughs> Laugh like a seven-year-old businessman, <laughs> you know? You actually laugh like a white guy that has definitely been taking advantage of our country. Um, but yeah, some kids chased me into a house, bro. They're like, fuck this, dude. They chased me. In. I run up on the first porch I see, knock on the door. go. It's a girl in there. Uh, I was like, these people are chasing me. Can you? And she's like, yeah, it was like college, it's a college kid. And so next thing you know, I'm in their place. There's like, people are passed out everywhere. These dudes are running around the house. They start throwing bricks through the windows, bro. Bricks? Bricks, bro. So, or big rocks. I mean, I don't know where they got them. <laughs> That's just full on dangerous. Oh, it was crazy. It was like a time to kill, you know? <laughs> Every room I go into, another brick flies in. <laughs> And I literally went through the house and then ran right out. And like, no joke, probably three or four windows were fucking broken in this lady's house. So, she so, had no clue who I was. Yeah, from this girl's perspective, <laughs> some guy just yeah. like, you got to help me. Yeah, yeah. Just, tsh, 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 yeah. Gone. Yeah. And she's just like, still, I'm just imagine, still sitting at the dining room table, like eating a bowl of cereal. Like, what the fuck just happened? Like, Stephanie, I told you not to answer the fucking door. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, all college girls are just calling their dad about insurance claims, I feel like, most of the time. <laughs> right. There's a lot of, like, drunk calls to dads that happen oh, that I've witnessed. That's a... I can't even imagine that. Yeah. Like, dad... <laughs> I'm like, are you on my phone? <laughs> like, check my phone one morning. It was like Lindsay's dad. I was like, why did you put your dad's number in my phone? <laughs> was it... um? And was it easy to, I mean, it obviously it was easy to meet chicks. Was it scary to meet chicks at that time when when you were in that college and that, and, you know, because you, you've had an interesting, interesting career so far because you've had, you've gotten to experience different types of fame and popularity. Mm-hmm. 
little you know, bit, yeah. not to not and not you know like trying to blow your ego up, but it's just it's interesting. A lot of people don't get to experience different genres of that, right? You know, and what that's like. Yeah, of. yeah. No, it was. Uh, I mean, it was in, it was fun in college. Like I, I like it right, was, you had a good time. It was yeah, I had a great time in college. Um, I like got like towards the end. I was just like really. I got kind of paranoid on campus. Like I just like felt like. I was felt like there was always eyes and People like I just like I had this the loudest fucking Dodge Challenger and like oh. I hated <laughs> I like I got I started hating driving it like through campus I was like fuck like the second I pull up everyone like it's like there's Tatro like, this fucking I'm like all ashamed Challenger I'm like driving around all ashamed in this Challenger that I thought was sick when I first bought it <laughs> and the Challenger exploded who would even name a car after that didn't the Challenger explode <laughs> Really? You know that? Yeah, it was like a NASA shuttle, probably right around the time you were born, that fucking blew up. Killed a couple school teachers, I think, and a, I think they had a dog and a brother on that thing, even. Who was, can you pull up the crew? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that thing blew up. When did it blow up? Can you let me know the date? Uh, it was uh, January 20th, yeah, 1986. Mm. When were you born in 90? 90? 92. Damn. Commanded by Francis Scobie. Can we get a picture? Let's click on that picture, man. Down there. Down. Oh, so that's not an actual Dodge Challenger. That's a spaceship. That's Challenger. a space shuttle and all those people died. The puppy's not there? <laughs> oh well. Hopefully it was Yin Yam. What's that guy's name? That puppy that fucking Jif Palm? Jif Palm, yeah. <laughs> Yim Yam. Dude, I'll fucking Jif Palm, bro. That little motherfucker. Yeah, man. I'll say this, bring it, Jeff. Okay. Bring it, Jeff. I would like to say it right now. I have beef with Jeff Pong. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bro, wouldn't that be such a great doggy treat you guys come out with, partner up? I got beef with Jeff Pong. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell a collab coming. Yeah. And this is it. You never three seen this, huh? Miles, downrange distance, three nautical miles. No, I've seen this. This is the the very tragic. So the twenty fifth depends on how you really look at it, but yeah. Now on the way after <laughs> more delays than NASA cares to count. This morning, it looks as though they were not going to be able to get off. Ooh. 15 seconds, velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. I love how Wait, he's afraid this... to admit what happened. Did, like, was that a live announcer talking about it? Yeah. He didn't react? I, know. I don't think they don't know what's going on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because, like, if I'm watching this... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like that didn't sound like what the like live the, feed uh, would have been. Right. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> He's like still talking about it. yeah they're approaching so and so nautical miles. <laughs> it's like no they're not. Well let's redo it. Go back a little bit and we'll be the newscasters. Uh, you mean? All right, we're here at Stennis Space Center out here in um, Macanamum, Florida. A very exciting day for all of us here at CNN, getting to witness the. Challenger. The launch of the Challenger. It is really getting up there, huh, Theo? Yeah, I think we're at about um, 60,000 nautical Na heights. Nautical miles. Nautical yeah. mile, we're, uh, mile heights. A lot of nautical miles. Right now, over these, there near Coral Gables, just passing over there, the stadium right under them. These, uh, <laughs> now, these spaceships, the new ones, are actually built with um, this new material that, oh. that, that makes them so much more durable. Oh, God. So much safer. Mm hmm. And you know, looks safe to me. It, oh <laughs> no, Theo! Oh Joe! Oh, oh my! Oh Jehovah! That is. Mm. Is that? And it's going in a couple directions now. <laughs> I don't think that was. I don't think that's what was supposed to happen. Oh, it's coming back. It seems like. Maybe they're. No, that's exactly what's supposed to happen, Jimmy. <laughs> Kids, this is this is what's supposed to happen. <laughs> they're coming back. The Challenger. There they are. There's somebody. <laughs> oh, that's, so that's crazy, man. But yeah, I remember we were in class and they wheeled in a television and people watched. And, kids, and you saw that live. The kids were all watching and everybody was excited. It was like a big day in America. Oh you know? man. Hey, well, rest in peace to that. All those people on the Challenger. Yep. Rest thank you for peace. thank you for risking your lives. And it was the first time they sent two women up there. That. Some people said it was because the women got in a fight in the shuttle, uh, and that's why it blew up. But that's just a rumor. <laughs> Dude, now were you at U of A? Did you take any astronomy classes? I did. Dude, so did I. I did, and that was like the only thing I liked. And we yes! got to go to the telescope. Yes! 
bro, they had so much fucking nightlife in the air. Oh man, <laughs> the 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 like the air the what's it called? Like the light pollution? Yeah, none. minimal. None. None. Bro. Stars. Like, yeah, amazing. <laughs> like some bitch has a nightlight a couple blocks over, and that's it. There was this. We had the. Uh, it was a stars class I was in. I forget the. Was it a man that taught it or not? Yeah, yeah. He was like this NASA guy who like rode Moto X bikes and shit and like thought he was so sick. He would like showed us a slideshow on day one and he was like, this is me on my dirt bike. I was like, How oh, old was dude. he? He was like 40 something. I don't know if it could have been the same guy or not. Probably not. Was it an intro astronomy course? Maybe. It was like, I was a freshman when I took it. Yeah, me too. I got kicked out of that class a few times for, he pointed me out one time. I was asleep in like the second row. Yeah. And oh, yeah, right. And it's so weird waking up into a situation where everyone's looking at you. Yeah. Because I was asleep in like the second row and apparently he was like, look at this guy. <laughs> Just sleeping in the second <laughs> row probably hung over i had like a like a wristband on from like yeah. the night before he's like probably look at his wristband probably hung over right now and like he's like why don't you get your buddy up to my friend and he like nudges me and i just like wake up and he's like and i just hear oh he's awake and just a, a classroom of a thousand people starts laughing and i'm just like oh man this is rough <laughs> a rough wake up and now you can't go back to sleep that's the worst part yeah i can't go back to sleep <laughs> that's the worst that'd actually be pretty legendary if i did that yeah. <laughs> just, <ugh. laughs> just get more comfortable what um so now you have you are are you working in films now what's that been like because you moved on i mean you've just kind of gone right up the scale yeah i mean i i still like I don't know. Like, I still would like to make YouTube videos. It's just not a very uh, good idea for me right now. I'm right, like, business wise. Yeah, business wise. Like, it's just like I could spend the money to shoot a sketch yeah. and upload it to YouTube and make no money on it. Yeah. Or I could like save those ideas and like profit off of them. Yeah, so it's or like wait to be seen in a movie. Yeah, to be seen to... in something that like is bigger. I still like want to put stuff on YouTube. It's just like. I don't know. The platform just is not for sketches right now. It's right. like it's for gamers. It's for beauty tutorials. It's for vlogs. It's for like stuff that doesn't cost any money to shoot. Yeah. And like crap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure. Yeah. I'm not gonna disagree with that. Um, there's only like a couple people on YouTube that I think do good stuff and there's more value to you i'm guessing as a artist these days as on bigger screens you know i mean you started off on the small screen like the smallest screen possible yeah right? yeah you know <laughs> well facebook is still technically a small screen oh, that's true i have that that's what i've been working on for like the last few months is real bros of simi valley and that's for facebook watch yeah yeah and that's been a lot of fun i just finished episode 10 yesterday are the bros real no, no. I mean, mm. I'm one of them. Yeah. You know, so. And what does it feel? Does it feel like you guys are real? It does. It does. <laughs> it's uh, it's like, you know, parody reality show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So it's I like. I think a, you'd like it. Yeah? Yeah. Is it like the, um? well, tell me what it's like. So it's just basically, I think the description of the show that's on Facebook is uh, living in Simi has always been pretty chill for these four best friends. Mm-hmm. But now that they just graduated from high school 10 years ago, it's time to move on. Can you just show Oh, this is a trailer? Do you want to see it? Yeah, let's watch it. So we can... I'm pregnant. What do you mean? Bryce is skating again. <laughs> Tessa, will you marry me? I'm down. I just got into community college of Moorpark School of Photography. This was season <laughs> one, which is on the YouTube channel. Good. Wow. Dude, so sick. Loki sucks not being able to get faced because I got a son right now. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> your kid escaped from the stroller. What? It's me, your boy's on. What up, Donder? What? 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 Ah! Your truck's balls just grazed my Dumped leg, dude. It. I'm the best I've ever been, honestly. <laughs> Dorm life. What's good? I'm finally out of Simi Valley, and I just can't wait to start this new chapter of my life. You ass out of look? Yeah. I'm still being back on the board. I'm starting to forget how much Steez actually had. Dude, if you win this, you can shred full time 500 bucks. 
How much weed is that? Yeah, why don't you just go do it, okay? Thanks for the invite. Maybe Simi isn't big enough for the both of us. Molly and I might be leaving Simi. It's like Javier's, it's everybody that eats their parents all eat Javier's. Live, <laughs> it's like, I'm about to fight your every, I mean, the whole Dude, show that's is great. Like, so it's all like the fic, it's totally, fiction was based off exactly how we act. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the most, it's just like, you know, the, these reality shows, like nothing fucking happens. Oh, yeah. They just edit it to make it look like stuff happens. They just put these crazy music yeah. and all these sound effects. Oh, Samantha's and, tits leaking, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guess she can't come to dinner. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 <laughs> like zooms, like, <laughs> she can't. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, the, I, the original idea was like, we just make a show like that just shows, it's like fucking nothing happens, but we just have all this crazy music and sound hype effect. it up like something happens but season two like a lot of shit is is happening it's 10 episodes now they're all like 15 minutes and is there is it like abortions or what are the kids doing on the weekends at skate so is there like a modern so like one a- guy my character uh just had a kid so yeah. he's like dealing with that fuck and <laughs> uh he works at a body shop no one of the best friends and my one-year-old have beef right oh. now so he keeps trying to fight this kid um damn one of the other guys just started college mm-hmm. school of photography oh that's easy so he's <laughs> over there working that yeah sure and i the, love how everybody's fucking school of photography <laughs> yeah it's like uh that's fucking instagram bro <laughs> yeah no, that's <laughs> okay. what it is that's an app nowadays if you're doing a college class that's an app then you're fucked bro right. you know so he's uh and then the other guy works at he used to work at his dad's surf shop but then he got dumped by his fiance because oh. she wanted more. So he decided to quit his job and oh, now he's trying to figure out something new. Right. Um, What's he going to do? CBD oil? No, he's <laughs> actually starting a surf shop without his dad. Ooh, yeah. Pretty crazy man. stuff, man. Oh, familial burn. Yeah. <laughs> but what we're doing actually that's pretty cool is uh, like all the characters have Instagram accounts. Mm-hmm. And so they're all posting as if they're real people, like in line with what's going on in the show. Really? So, like, you know, Duncan gets dumped in episode one, and the following week, it's all like sad photos of him, like third wheeling, or like one, like actually feeling so great and happy lately. Oh, and that's great. Like a me, like, you know, like a inspirational quote. Yeah. Like, and then the other guy's like, and then they all comment on each other's stuff. Oh, that's crazy. So, so like, it's like a whole other world. Yeah, like it's when like I post a photo world. with my kid, the guy who like hates my kid will comment like an eye rolling emoji. Yeah. And, like, Fuck Bronson. What's the kid's name? Uh, Hawk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just like all oh. these, it's about the like big valley lifted truck, like Oakley shade wearing bros. Yeah. Um, just brotastic yeah it's just it's, grotesque it's pretty funny yeah. yeah that's cool man no i love those types of shows like the parody type of shows um they had one on this was on yahoo for a while but it was about the burning love yes yeah and that was really good yeah it reminds me of that a little bit but just more like uh youthful that's kind of yeah. what vandal was like too right yeah i mean what like what was cool about vandal is like it was it felt so real and like I kind of wanted to take a little bit of that real feeling and like just like in terms of like the camera styles and the way we shot it like I wanted it to feel like a real reality show. Right. So if people think it's real then it's like nice. Mission Do you think there's some people who think it is real? I don't know cuz it's so fucking ridiculous that it's like like there's literally an ongoing beef between like a 27 year old and a one year old child where he like <laughs> is getting held back from fighting a kid. I fucking love that. He like in one episode he like like the kid doesn't say anything and he's like, "What'd you say?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Sounds like you're talking shit." And someone who's talking shit like you deserves to get locked in a hot car with the windows rolled up. Oh, yeah. I was like, "Whoa, dude!" Oh yeah. <laughs> wow so i don't know how you can watch something like that and think it's real yeah but at the same time like people thought vandal was real people think things are real man people (laughs) thought this video i did with uh like a -A make-a-wish foundation kid was real Mm -hmm. where it's like a kid running for a touchdown and then out of nowhere like someone comes and tackles the shit out of him gets grilled out (laughs) yeah people thought that was real and it's Mm. like in the first five seconds of the video the announcer is like Tommy Douglas, born with a potato for a heart, uh, is going to undergo a heart transplant surgery, but we're going to have him run the first touchdown, you know? 
says he is born for with a potato for a heart. Yeah, and fucking which Michael, is impossible, <laughs> right? Obviously, you know. And Michael Irvin, you know, football oh, legend, yeah. tweeted the video out like, "Oh, I feel so bad for laughing, <laughs> but like, 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 isn't this messed up?" And I'm like, "Dude, you think it's so? Some people think it's real." Yeah, like Michael Irvin. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Irvin's a flat earther, <laughs> undeniably. Is he actually? Oh, bro, and also flat earth, I think, started in the black community years ago. <laughs> All my black friends were like, "Bro, bro." Flat Earth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, no school, bro. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like not flat Earth. The, the flat Earthers made a big push, dude, and it's led so... by Bob, the rapper. Really? Did you not oh, hear yeah, about? Yeah, he, I mean, right. I think he. So if you go on his Twitter, he's always, like, I don't see a curve. <laughs> 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 posting like skylines like <laughs> no curve <laughs> like, come yeah, on man where the curve is <laughs> you know Kyrie Irving's huge on that stuff too he Kyrie was Irving. I think he has since renounced his flat earth beliefs publicly. probably just people quieting him I bet he's yeah, yeah. Doesn't believe like, shit. like dude shut up you gotta stop with the flat earth because <laughs> it's growing um one of our uh busiest episodes that we've ever had was uh we had a guy named Eddie Bravo and he is big into he started like 10 planet jujitsu and um he was like a, a he's like a jujitsu fighter and now like a like a like a I don't know what he's a, you know he's a liaison to the uncertain elements of the universe <laughs> I think <laughs> he's like a sherpa down the fucking stair steps into hell and possibility and uh and but he I, I was at I was at, in Louisiana a couple weeks ago at breakfast and some waitress comes up and just sits down right next to him she's like oh my god tell me everything about Eddie Bravo, you know? <laughs> like, people are into that whole stuff now. Like, it's getting deeper, you know? Like, I met Buzz Aldrin, the man that been to the moon. And, Allegedly. Yeah. Well, that's what I said. When I looked him in the eyes, bro, no joke. I didn't get the feeling that he had, that the person I'm looking at had been there. Really? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you told me, like, yeah, you know, I... You know, I did a couple months in the fucking Sahara. I might be like, eh, uh -huh. lying. Wait, so you're saying when when he was on the moon, when, when he said something, he was like, like kind of like a, yeah, yeah, I've been on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been in the moon? Uh, me? Yeah. <laughs> Why you seem so un me? unsure about this? Oh. No, the, oh, the moon. Yeah, no, I've, I've, for sure, yeah, yeah, for sure. I've been to the, I've been to the moon, yeah. Which moon? That moon? <laughs> The uh, Armin? <laughs> Armin yeah. Earth's moon. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Wait, yeah. I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Tr he had a lot of moon bitches with him, too. No doubt, bro. He gets a lot of... Because that <laughs> is a type of fame that I think... Moon fame. Yeah. I mean, that's... Unprecedented, yeah. you know? Want to come back to my place and see the socks I wore? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You want to walk in the shoes I walked in? So, <laughs> this past weekend is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators. With more than 2,500 online classes in design, business, and more, you'll discover countless ways to fuel your creativity, your curiosity, and your career. That's what's most important. If there's a skill you want to learn and you want to you you want to take on a new career, you want that little side piece job style. Well, now you can learn it without going to a college course. Skillshare. Take classes in social media marketing, mobile photography, creative writing, and even illustration or drawing. Whether you want a new passion, a new hustle, whatever, a professional skill, Skillshare is there to help. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for my listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right. Skillshare is offering this past weekend listeners two months of unlimited access for over 25,000 classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn to start your two months now that's skillshare.com slash theo vaughn now back to the show so now would you say what is the difference between the fame that you had as or the popularity you know um that you had as a youtuber or mm -hmm. in that world or and then more as now like or just what are some of the things that are different about it youtube fame is less people are less respectful <laughs> like right it's they assume like you're you're more accessible because 
you know, I mean, a lot of YouTubers, they talk to the camera. Yeah. And these people feel like they know them because they're so accessible. They post so often. And they don't think it's always like, like they think like they see that guy walking. That's the same guy that they saw in the video. Right. Whereas like an actor, they think, oh man, that's so-and-so. He was pretending to be, you know, like he was an actor in this. Right. So they don't think they know you. I see. They just, so they're more like respectful of personal space if it's from like a show or a movie. Whereas if it's YouTube, Cause it's they you. can just jump yeah. on you and put put their arm yeah. around you and up, be like, take this shot. Yeah. You're going to be like, fuck yeah, I'm going to yeah. take this shot because that's what I do on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm the same in real life. And they're like, I'm going to fucking stab you, motherfucker. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. Like they think that's what I'm walking around hoping for, I guess. You know, they yeah. want to that's how it was for a while. That's how a lot of this hostility would, would come about because people would be like, yo, dude, and they'd, you know, be all over yeah. me and take a shot. And I'd be like, ah, dude, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not like that. And yeah. Like, oh, what? What do you mean? And they just, their face You're on shifts fucking to YouTube, guy. Disappointment. Yeah. I just see disappointment. Them just mentally unsubscribe. I just watch it happen. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's a new, that, that's a great way to, to, to talk about how people like, yeah, they're get not disappointed into each, when yes, they meet get you. Disappointed. Yeah, they mentally unsubscribed from me. Yeah, fuck, that's severe. What well, do you think? It's like that with stand up. Do you think it's like that with when you do stand up? Like people think you're more accessible. Um, I don't know if comedians maybe get that a little bit more, but I remembered like uh, I think maybe comedians do a little bit more. Podcasters do. I think in the podcasting world, that's Chris Farley. Okay, <laughs> people think it's Trump or me. <laughs> um, for a second I thought it was like a big Trump I could I'm, I'm on you know I'm to the side here but now yeah, yeah it's obviously yeah it's Chris Farley that's dope yeah pretty cool man thank you um, good good work but yeah I don't uh, I don't know dude but 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 as being a st so now as a celebrity what's that more like it's a little bit more or uh, being like a mo working in movies and film now yeah I mean it just when I get recognized for that stuff it's more of like uh I mean, I, I would say just overall lately, people have been a lot more just respectful of yeah. personal space. Just just because, like, I don't do the same stuff that I used to. I'm not, like... So, I don't, I don't know. When people come up to me now, it's usually... People are usually pretty cool. They'll just be like, hey, man, like, love what you're doing. Right. And I'm like, thanks. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I have no problem with that. If you're just going to tell me thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah. But, they enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, but... Do, um... What was like somebody who came up to you or a celeb that hit you up? Like like Chris Pratt just started following me the other day on Instagram, right? Oh, Which wow. was like a big, you know. I, Seth Rogen followed me on Twitter a few years really? ago. I was like, that's that's awesome. And he like responded to one of my tweets. And Did I was he? like, he knows who I am. Yeah. So that was cool. Chris um, Pratt, though. I mean. That's, that's some, pretty good. That's some big stuff, dude. Yeah. It's nothing small. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I wish he was a hot chick would be a lot cooler. Right. <laughs> you know? um, Did you have to pay for uh, at Jimmy? No. People think I probably paid like a lot of money for at Jimmy, but in reality, I had checked on it a while before. And what is at Jimmy? Sorry. That's his Instagram that's handle is just Jimmy. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> yeah. So I like checked on it to see like maybe it's available. Probably not. Or yeah. like I wanted to like, some guy had it. It was like he had no post. And I was like, yo, man, could I buy this username? And he never hit me back. He had like an inactive account. Fuck. And I then like that. a few months go by and my friend like says something in a group chat on Instagram and is like, at Jimmy, you look like this guy. And it's like, was like, just clicked at Jimmy and it said user not found. Wow. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. Did I just like unlock? Did I just stumble upon this? Like <laughs> it's free now. The other guy got deactivated and I just happened to click this it. Moment. And I just snagged it. Fuck, bro. <laughs> yeah. This seemed like a see me, see, uh, bros, a see me valley moment. <laughs> yeah, man. It was dude, a, remember it, how you got your fucking Instagram handle, bro? <laughs> yeah, dude. It was sick. It was <laughs> sick. Didn't even have to pay, man. <laughs> But that does seem like something that would be on that show. Um, we had some questions too that came from some fans. Let's uh, let's hit one of them, guys. All right. For sure. Hey, Billy from Iowa, big fan. Jimmy, what's good? Big fan of YouTube since the YouTube days. 
I was fucking crying, sobbing during Worst Drug Dealer Ever. That was one of the funniest videos, man. I was wondering if uh, either one of you guys ever had a real-life experience like that or any sketchy times buying some herb back in the day. And uh, another question for you, Jimmy. How in the fuck did you get Pauly Shore in a video back then, man? That was had me rolling, man. <laughs> gang, gang, peace. Gang. Um, there you go, Jimmy. Well, just to yeah, quickly well. answer the Pauly Shore question, it was uh, he was just trying to do YouTube videos at the time. Yeah. So like, I think he had gotten in touch with my YouTube network, and like they were trying to set up collaborations. And my manager hit me up. It was like. Paulie Shore wants to do YouTube videos, so we wrote something for him. wasn't too, <laughs> wasn't, too wasn't too crazy. Yeah, he um, reached out. It's and then a, the drug dealer video that was just my video called "The Worst Drug Dealer Ever." I think I've seen that one before. Actually, I think I just ended up seeing that one. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm just a you know terrible sketchball that whole time, and but I mean I've definitely had some kind of experience like that. Mm -hmm. Not probably to that extent. But the drug dealer that like wants to hang around for way too long. Yeah. That's happened. The, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that milling around guy. Yeah, the guy who like wants to then, you know, smoke the product with you after he sells it to you. Oh yeah, big like, smoking. Maybe you should contribute some of yours. Yeah. If you're gonna be uh maybe give me the money back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need six dollars back, guy. <laughs> Dude, I remember one time they had um Got stopped with a with a buddy of mine, and he was um kind of a homoerotic kind of guy, and he was about forty four, and he died actually. And I just talked about this this week on the podcast. He died. He drove into an embankment on pills one time, but he and I were bus boys together, and we actually uh and we um one he used to buy weed, and I would drive him around when I was young because he was, you know, older and had weed, and so one time we get stopped by the police, right? So the police take him out of my car and put him into the cop car. He has a brick of weed in his shirt, right? So now he's sitting in the cop car with a brick of weed in his shirt. Oh when God. he's in there, he leaves it in the cop car. They ended up getting him out of the cop car and letting him go, bro. So he basically got escorted to be held, detained into a cop car for a while while they just talked to me, the driver of the vehicle. Then they search the car. Nothing's on him because it's – nothing's in the car because it's on him in the cop car. <laughs> Then they decided something happened in their end or whatever. They're going to let us go. They put him back in my car, and he and the, and he left the weed in the cop car. And that was, what, like a pound? Yeah, like whatever you would do, that brick, you know? That's nuts. That's <laughs> fucking binoculars. That is <laughs> so wild. Oh, dude. And I thought it was ballsy when my friend went to Coachella and kept his joints in his hand while they patted him oh, down. <laughs> and he just like came up to me, and he was like, dude, and just opened his hand. I was like, what, where did you have those? He was like, I just had it in my hand the whole time. <laughs> Could you imagine if they were just like, open your hand? <laughs> Would have been so easy. Like, uh, like uh, sir, can you open your hand, please? <laughs> Fuck, they got me. Fuck. Oh, yeah, and you just do one of them? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, which hand? <laughs> Fuck, man. Was it more fun a little bit when you were, do, do you feel sometimes like you miss being more unknown? Uh, because you could have more fun and more freedom. Yeah, I think I've I'm definitely like less outgoing than I used to be. Like I think when I, like when before I was like remotely famous at all, I I was just like a lot more open to people I didn't know. Right. And now, like I don't know, it just kind of like the whole college thing. It made me not want to like meet new people really i'm still like open to like meeting new people right like i just like there's now like this hesitance that i'm like i i don't if i don't where i'm not sure about intentions and so like i don't know i i hang out with the same friends i've hung out with for the past like eight ten years yeah and like i don't know i i it definitely made me less outgoing and i'm definitely not down to like i don't know i just you know, you're certain situations you like feel weird about jumping into just because you're like, I don't want to get like recognized, right? Yeah, because if you get recognized, it almost takes it takes you out of the situation, and you can't just right. be in the situation having fun. Yeah, and then some of the situation becomes about you, which isn't you know, and if it's yeah, yeah, it really can kind of ruin it. It 
it can. Yeah, it can. It, you're right. It just like takes you out, and all of a sudden you're like you're laughing, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh no, oh, fuck. now I'm noticing that there's people looking at me. Yeah. Like, now that you just said that. Yeah. Now it's all kind of ruined. Yeah. <laughs> now I've got to pay for dinner. And now I've got. Now I'm just gonna leave. I think. <laughs> yeah. See you guys. <laughs> yeah. The fu- yeah. And- <laughs> that would be a funny way to go about it: getting recognized and just it just very visual, <laughs> like like being very obvious yeah. that it ruined your whole day. <laughs> Yeah, it's me. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. <laughs> Damn. Dude, wouldn't that be, become such a great thing if people knew that you got, if somebody reckoned, don't say you fucking know him <laughs> or he'll leave. <laughs> just like the, uh, like just laughing and then just. That becomes your fame MO. It's like, fuck. <laughs> you know, I can tell you no. <laughs> I'm going to head out, man. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's really shook. Do you are you executive producing the show that you're on now? Yeah, I I directed it and wow. wrote it with my buddy too. Was it scary to think that you could direct something? Uh, to first think that you could, and then to actually be doing it, is it? It was definitely because um, thinking of something is one thing. Sometimes you get a feeling, like, oh, I could do that, I could do that, but yeah. then when you finally are doing it, it's like fuck. Like, I because I mean, I I've done sketches on youtube for so long so it was like doing the, like making something happen it was like on a small scale like that was just life but then when it became like a big thing and like a facebook show and like you know i'm showing up to set we got trailers and like there's like a hundred people on the crew that are there and right like ev- like i'm answering all the final questions <laughs> like i learned a lot i definitely learned a lot and it was definitely a little overwhelming at first to be in that situation where it's like there's no one really to look to besides like advice you know it's like the all the final decisions are right i have to make the i have to pull the final trigger so Damn. it's like you know a lot of things it's it's yeah, like that john wilkes booth <laughs> <laughs> i like that yeah i mean it was it was fun though i mean it was it was it was awesome and it was great to be able to you know have you ever been like well let me check oh you want to let me check let me check with me (laughs) (laughs) there's a lot of times like like that (laughs) and it's also like if you're gonna say no to something that someone else wants it's you can't really be like yeah they're not gonna allow that it's like (laughs) well aren't you the final well (laughs) yeah like i I don't know if we're gonna be able to accommodate well but (laughs) So you're not going to be able to accommodate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Me. Yeah, right. well, actually, I'm on a text chain with my parents. Yeah. Just, we all have but our powers. You can't really powers. Like, blame stuff on, on, other, wow. on other things. So that kind of makes you have to probably grow up in some senses, like in a business sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, I mean, like over the course of the shoot, I just learned, I learned so much. And like by the end, I was, I was coming so much more prepared and like just from – like a director standpoint but also from like an executive producer standpoint because i mean it is a little weird when you're like you know i'm like you know 26 and like all the other producers besides my buddy who i wrote the show with are like you know like 40 50 year old men yeah and like i'm like they're asking me for like the final answer on stuff i'm like this is it was just a little weird but i got used to it did it make and you? I don't f- plan on getting unused to it. Right, right. Did you, yeah, it must have been started to feel like a sense of pride at some point, like you know, not ego, but even pride. Like, fuck, this is kind of crazy. Like, I can actually do this. You at know? The, I mean, at the end of the shoot, like when we had finally finished everything and like everyone was all like celebrating, that was like a really, it was a really cool moment because that was when I, you know, looked around and I was like, this is sick. Like, we did this. We I did, did this. this. Like, yeah. This is like I did this. All these jobs. You know? Yeah, people are working and people had fun. Yeah, the DP was like, to the job creator. And I was like, wow, the Whoa. job creator. Dilly dilly. <laughs> dilly dilly. <laughs> I would, and I've never said dilly dilly before, and I would never fucking say it again either. Because <laughs> it's cheesy, but that instance felt like it worked. It made me happy. What? Uh, thank you. What um what do, what do you feel like is other stuff that you want to get into now? Are you starting? Are you thinking about like do you have a, are you doing a, your own production company now? Yeah. Yeah. So my production company was did the show. Did the show Bros technically Simi with Valley. another production company. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now what I'm 
I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say like the network, but me and Dan Lagana have a, um, me, Dan Lagana, Funny or Die, and CBS have a development deal mm. for a pilot we pitched last year that I've been working on for like three and a half years. It's like loosely about my life, um, kind of the idea of a, of a guy that's famous on YouTube yeah. but doesn't really belong in the YouTube world. Mm. Um, so it's Vigilante just, almost. What? Vigilante a little bit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's how I like to think of myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm out of here, guys. You, fucking, <laughs> you could take your fucking makeup tutorials and how to hula hoop and your ASMR and shove it up your ASMR. Forgot about ASMR. Yeah. Did you ever hook up with any of the ASMR chicks? No. Fuck, bro. <laughs> how crazy would it have been to just put like a really live mic right next to your penis and just had them do the tapping stuff on your wing? <laughs> next level, bro. <laughs> Do you watch ASMR stuff? I mean, I haven't seen a, a lot of it, but I've seen yeah. <laughs> I've seen most of the food items that they've done. Yeah, uh, when they started doing furniture and shit, I was what out. What do you mean bro. doing furniture? Like you know, how does it sound when I tap my hands on a piece of furniture? You know, really, people I, just dig that. Yeah, I listen to some antiques, but I'm not listening to just fucking <laughs> shit from IKEA. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. You got it's got to be some quality furniture. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. want some quality sound tones. I want it to. I want it to sound expensive. Yeah, 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 I want something nice. I want to hear some. I want to hear a ghost in the Schiffer robe. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Maybe not even hear anything. Just, a, just yes. Tempurpedics feeling. You know? Did you? Um, was there other businesses and stuff that you started before you even did YouTube? Because you kind of. One thing I've noticed in talking about people that are like creators and entrepreneurs, um, is that 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 some of that's always been a spirit of theirs, like yeah, you know, or been a practice of theirs. Do you have like a um? you know, like a um, lemonade stand or even anything like that? Like, was there something wild you did? I always... Do you sell a bunch of fucking shirts? Like, did you do something? I It was always something I wanted to do. Like, I, you know, definitely a clothing company was like one of the ideas. What was it called, do you think? Do you have any idea? I think it was called... Because uh, I had one too, and I can tell you about it. I think ours was called uh, LTD, and it was Living the Dream. Oh, yeah, that's a good we, one. We were like... Can you bring up Living the Dream clothing? <laughs> no, yeah, I don't even know. It, oh, maybe somebody made it. it oh, somebody fucking made it, bro. Someone definitely has that now. Um, but clothing line is like, if you're you know a, a creative-minded individual who yeah. doesn't want to have a nine-to-five job, like I think your first thought is, i got to start a clothing line. Clothing, bro. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs clothing. Look, can you click on one of those, man? Oh, and there you go. It looks like women's team, team LTD. Yeah, wow. Well. Hockey looks like Canadian women's outdoor wear. <laughs> that <laughs> fuck. Cool. That's exactly what we were going for. <laughs> um, yeah, I, we had one called Jimmy Blunt, and it was about it was basically just me and this other kid that smoked weed in school, and we just yeah we had like all these pictures of like this blunt like on a surfboard and then he was like you know having a smoothie or you know uh see that's a way better idea than meeting somebody new or something just basic things whatever and happened nothing we fucking <laughs> my buddy ended up becoming a cop and a, and he got pretty born again and then unborn and then reborn again he was wow. fucking just a zygote for christ by the end of it all <laughs> <laughs> a roller coaster yeah and then uh yeah and that was it and the shit fell apart man but I had some big ideas. I, I remember I, I tried to see you around the world one time. I ended up. <laughs> I wrote a letter to see you. This is probably twenty years ago. What is see you? See you is like a um, big roller skate on the water, but it's like a <laughs> not a roller skate, like a boat, but it's just your boat. You know, like a jet okay. ski. Oh, jet ski. Jet skis. Okay. Yeah, they used to just call them see dos and I wrote them. I was like, I want to see you around the whole world, and they never wrote me back. But it was you know just weird ideas you know yeah. that I had. There's it a was couple. always like big. There's just a couple of guys who have left voicemails who still want to make that dream happen for you. you really? Know? Yeah, so we could we could probably hit them up and get you around the world. Wow. Yeah, who are those guys? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I think it's just a couple. It's the first you're hearing about this? <laughs> yeah. Just oh, a couple man. of guys with ski, uh, jet skis, I think, but. Alarming. We'll see. <laughs> but cool, could be possible. Uh, yeah, I just notice that sometimes. So do you have a, so you have a new project with the same, um, one of the same guys from, uh, from American Vandal. Vandal. Yeah, yeah, it's like pretty much the same, like, Vandal core squad minus the creators of Vandal, right? Obviously, um, that's cool. But yeah, I'm really excited about that. I've been working on that for like literally three years. I was working on it with someone else, it fell through, and now I'm working on it with them. Like 
finally got it to pitch. Pitched it last year. Got really? a development deal. Were, now, were you were you just cast in Vandal, or did they did you like come up with the idea and like kind of help? No, no, I, I didn't. I didn't uh, come up with the show. It was nice. just I was just in it. Cool. Yeah. Did you have thoughts on season two? Did you have anything to do with season two? I didn't have anything to do with season two, but I really liked season two. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it. Just, yeah, I thought it was really good. Yeah. I thought it was brave amounts of diarrhea in it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, there's not going to be still more diarrhea. Yeah. It and was all early be. on, though. Like, they got it all yeah. out of the way early on. It, yeah, but it resonated, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see it. I can see it right now. The second episode still felt, you know, it burned a little. Um, <laughs> let's take another question that came in. You know, you got the most calls that have ever come in for a guest that we've had. Really? And we've had some, honestly, guests that I thought were better than you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, we we're probably very, just have a, a similar demo. You know? <laughs> no, we're very happy to have you. In. Uh, here, here's another one. Theo Don the Von, Mr. Tetra Potato, what's going on? Um, I'm just wondering, Mr. Tetro, when is the next balcony conversations? Gang, 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 gang. When's that next balcony conversations? What is it? It's uh, it's a series I do with my buddy Christian, where we just are on the balcony and we just have conversations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it basically is like the lowest production YouTube video that we can do that people still really enjoy. Right. Um, and we just talk about like different topics and stuff. Um, but the next one, I'm not sure. Probably in the next couple months it's like anytime we like want to talk about something instead of like it's almost like a podcast kind of you know it's like if we just wrote a conversation for us to have right and just had it on a balcony though. yeah do you think um and that guy also seemed like they got from clockwork orange didn't he a little bit have you ever seen that movie i haven't seen it no it was like I, a scary you, I, movie when i was young i know i'll constantly disappoint you with any movie that you want to reference Mm -hmm. I probably haven't seen it. Damn, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, let's take it. Let's do another one. <laughs> Speaking of Clockwork Orange. Question for Jimmy Tatro. Um, what have you done to make the world a better place? I know Yvonne's been preaching. What have you been doing? Share. Like, gang, gang. <laughs> I feel like that guy has come on him somewhere. <laughs> Um, Wait, what did he say? What have you been doing to make what the world done to a make the world a better place? And he says Theo just preaches. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I basically am just doing not much. So what are you doing? I just, you know, I think making people laugh. There you go. I think that's making the world a better place. Yeah, bringing some, bringing a little joy. You could be doing crime too. <laughs> I could. If you did crime, what would it be, man? And be Ooh. honest. Like if I was gonna be like a bad guy. Yeah, I mean, you're doing a crime, brother. Mm. Somebody's going to die. Someone's going to die? Yeah. Oh, man. We're not doing little <laughs> You're fucking... way too excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't want that you fucking, you know, oh, whoa. 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 We're going to get right back to this question. There's a <laughs> a video question came in, and these people look semi-nude, so let's hear this one. And and very related to the crime thing. Hey, Theo. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah. Um, I guess my question is, uh, I recently just got out of jail last right. night, and uh, okay. I was wondering if... Uh, have y'all ever been to jail? And if you don't want to tell us that, I understand. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said he got out of jail? Yeah, he said he just got out of jail last night. He was laying in bed with a young lady um, who was of age, I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to jail. Have you been to jail? I have been in jail. Yeah, I've been twice. I know, I, I know that I've been once. <laughs> Drunk? Yep. One time I was drunk and high, and they found a kid upstairs in this house, and they said it was somebody's kid, and we're all like, that ain't our kid, and then we all went to jail, you know? Really? Yeah. You can't get all fucked up in a house if there's a kid sleeping upstairs, you know? Who, who is the kid? That's why, I, that, you know, the, the defense rests, brother. That was my question. <laughs> It was a kid. And then people thought that they were taking a, sli a kid around and putting him in places and, you know, like the cops were just busting people like that. Oh, wow. But <clears throat> where was that? This was in uh, Mississippi, mm. in Natchez, Mississippi. So both the times I went to jail were in Arizona. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of Arizona. And do they give you extra water in the jail there? Because I feel like you get so dehydrated in jail there. I know. No. <laughs> what, what'd you go for? I went uh, both times. The second time. I mean, both times were fucking ridiculous. The first time I was just really drunk and like, 
I was, I like blacked in mm -hmm. when cop lights were coming down the street and I was walking down the street in an elf costume with my <laughs> other elf friend. Yeah. And we're, there were three <laughs> originally. So I'm like, all of a sudden my friend takes off. You got to understand, like I just landed, like I just got there. You yeah. Know? I don't even know where I've right. been for the past two hours. So elf one takes <laughs> off and like I see cop lights and I'm like, wait, 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 why are you running? Are we doing something wrong? I just got here. I have no context. Wow. So I just start running and I jump a fence and I land on the other side of the fence and I just hear freeze. And they made me come back over the fence, which, oh. which I did, which yeah. is like, why the fuck would you come back over the fence? Why is this fat, this fat ass cop's not going to jump this spike? It was like a 10 foot spiky fence that I somehow jumped like a ninja. And now yeah, I'm climbing that's... back over the fence and I give the guy my like ID. He finds my fake ID and they basically just brought me to jail for being drunk underage. Damn. And I was in an elf costume the whole time. Fuck. And the second time, they raided our house because they thought we were drug dealers, yes. which we weren't. And um, then they brought me outside of the house mm -hmm. after they they slammed my face into the ground. Ooh. So they, we, we're getting bangs on the door. There's like 10 people at our house. It's like a very, like we're smoking weed. It's like a late Why would they do that? Were you in blackface? <laughs> oh yeah i'm just saying at least then they would at least then they would have had a reason to do it you know what i wasn't it was just a bad joke. I forgot it totally... <laughs> it was <just> a bad joke. <laughs> no it was like they thought we were drug dealers i was getting like a lot of packages oh, from like yeah. clothing companies yeah. and stuff bullshit we had like i had my drug dealer looking challenger in the driveway oh, yeah there's always weed coming out of our house <laughs> yeah, yeah there was always drug smoke so like out of the house. they thought we were Drug, they like rolled the whole western coordinate of Tucson police. Damn. Helicopters, dogs, they run in, guns drawn, tackle Fuck. me. Said I was preventing them from getting to the couch because there was a girl on the couch waiting for an Uber with my friend who she had just hooked up with. Damn. And they said he was holding her down and I was preventing them from getting to her. Bullshit. Which was nuts. They slammed my face, boom, boom, I'm bleeding. I'm, I'm like, what the fuck? They kicked down doors, wake everyone up in the house, didn't find anything. They're like, all right, place is clear. Red tag the house, give all the miners MIPs, and let's get out of here. Damn. And I'm like, that's fucked. They bring me outside, breathalyze me. I blow a .11, which is .03 over the legal limit, yep. which is nothing. They bring me to jail. You're not even driving. For being drunk underage after they pulled me uh. out of my house. Because they didn't have anything. They were like, oh, fuck, we fucked up. Let's bring this kid to jail. Honestly, we could have sued the fuck out yeah, of him. Yeah, bro, that's Murphy's Law or something. But I didn't have, I didn't, it was like 500 bucks to sit down with a lawyer. I didn't have that kind of money. Fuck. Yeah, it was messed up. And I was like, Damn. I was in the back of the cop car. Like, they didn't even let me bring my shirt or like my wallet or my phone. or oh my So God, I, I get like out of jail. And Dale. Yeah, I'm like sitting in the back of the cop car cuffed. And this guy's driving me, and I could see in his eyes he knew it was fucked up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm like, is this why you got into this job, man? Is this why you do this? I was like, you know this is fucked up. And he was like, dude, I don't know what to say, man. I'm like, this is so fucked. I was yeah. I was like really getting You know it. what to fucking say. I was like, this is so fucked. Man. Yeah. But then I got out of jail at like <laughs> 8 a.m. So I don't have a phone. I don't have a wallet. So I, And I'm like walking around. Was it kind trying... of freeing a little bit? Was it relaxing? <laughs> no, because... <laughs> I like being in, like that, but not when I'm getting out of jail. Yeah. And you're trying to ask someone in the parking lot to borrow their oh, phone. They're yeah. like, get away from me, jail guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, where have you been? And it just says jail behind you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hey, uh, ignore where we are, but like, you have a phone I could borrow? No one wanted to let me borrow their phone. So I just started walking. And turns out we were nine miles away from campus. Mm. And I walked all the way there because I just didn't want to like, I didn't know what to do. I just started walking in the direction of camp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I fucking get home at like 11 a.m. Like mm. I had taken my jail <clears throat> shirt off. People are driving by recognizing me like, walk of shame. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. You have no idea what I've been through. Damn. Yeah, it was a 
really gnarly 24 hours fuck but that's real you got in the system man you could <laughs> but that's such a that's a lot of systemic shit in there you didn't have the money to get that attorney so you're like just fuck now you're back on the street you're fucking angry yeah man you angry. know you got a chip on my shoulder yeah <laughs> and anything can happen yeah i like that how about you what, what was your jail what happened in just that jail? one time they took the kids in you know they said you guys are fucked man and uh <laughs> whose kid is this they brought a kid down from upstairs and everybody was like i don't know. i didn't know there was a like kid in there imagine being in a house for a long time having a great time suddenly a kid comes downstairs that nobody knows right yeah yeah it's like the shining bro and i was like well i don't know that kid they're like you're <laughs> fucking going to jail and the kid they, they asked the kid i remember uh point out the people you know in the room and the kid went like this and went to each person and just pointed at him <laughs> no way yeah. everyone there yeah it was like eight this people. This sounds there. like a setup. Oh, dude, that's what that's I felt like. Smells like a setup. To I was me. like, look at that fucking kid, man. <laughs> you know? That kid is that. And that's it, man. And they took us in. That was pretty I guess it wasn't an unenjoyable, but it was interesting. How then, long were you in just for the night? In the in the big house. Yeah. Just me and this the biggest guy ever. He literally took up eleven percent of the cell, right? <laughs> And I took up 3% of the cell, bro. But it was just, I felt like he fucking was getting more than I was. <laughs> and that's when I knew I had an issue, you know? <laughs> but it was a good, you know, it was what it was, man. Having cellmates is alarming. Yeah. I had two. Did you? And they are both covered head to toe tattoos. Yes. This was the first time when I was in an elf costume. Yeah. <laughs> And oh, and you're if there's a uh, let's play, somebody's getting fucked in here. Yeah, I was wearing tights. It's you. Yeah. So wow. I, I knew were I had to make a good, good shape. What? Were you were you in good shape? I was time? in good shape, but I was still concerned. You know, yeah. I woke up in an elf costume with tights on. I don't know. I don't know where I am. I just all I see is two guys yeah. with face tattoos. Oh yeah, staring at me. One dude's like itching his neck, like fully methed out. Time to fucking grant wishes, and I brother. Stood up. <laughs> And I've probably told this story like a hundred times, but I literally stood up and the first thing I said was, Shannon's going to be so pissed. <laughs> and then these guys loved me. They were like, oh, this guy, he's our guy. <laughs> and I like walk into the holding area the next morning and like, everyone, I hear everyone like snickering and like nudging each other like, yo, Elfman's back. He's back. And I'm like, Apparently, like, I was causing a scene the night before yeah. that I wasn't even aware of. Damn, that fucking dirty elf, the stripper's back. <laughs> that's the worst. They're like, elf man's back. Yeah. And I was like, that's concerning. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I back? The stripper's <laughs> back. And you're like, what? <laughs> what happened? Dude, we used to have this thing called vajipin. And I've talked about this when girls would put a hit of acid in their vaginas, right, when I was growing up. And then one night, we got all... You know, everybody got keyed up on some dope, and somebody went, um, and they had to, um, somebody made love to a woman. And then they wanted to get, a, they're like, she wouldn't take a plan B pill, you know? Yeah. Because he thought maybe they were going to start a family on accident. And he's like, dude, we got to sneak back over to her place, and while she's sleeping, we got to put this plan B pill in her. <laughs> in her? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, uh, I think they have to take it orally, <laughs> you know, and oral is somewhere else. And I, yeah, I don't think that that's how it works. I don't think you slip a hit of plan B into somebody, you know, they don't make a suppository, you know what I'm saying? That's and then crazy. the baby's just going back to heaven, you know? That's crazy. I uh, thought you were going to say put it in her drink or something like a... Like a normal deal? No. Nah. <laughs> I wish I would have, man, but that's... <laughs> Look, a lot of people have bad ideas. Thankfully, that guy—that guy's idea didn't pan out. Let's take yeah. uh, two more calls here for uh, Mr. Tetro. I have a question for Jimmy, and it is, how old were you when uh, when your voice dropped and got to the low, sultry voice? All right? Twelve. Gang, gang. Really? Yeah. God, you must have had a hog on you at 12, huh? <laughs> it was, My God. It was not this low. You could have been a police officer. It was still low. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did people ask you to buy them liquor? Were you the guy, like the guy and your friends that would go in and try to use a fake ID? Well, no, because I never uh. looked that young. I mean, I never looked that old. I was like, I didn't have, all, I didn't have facial hair, really. So it was like, I feel like facial hair was a big... Yeah, a big component to who is getting the liquor. Yeah, that's a good point. We had one dude that had a beard. Literally, at 
11 years old this dude had a fucking beard and he prided himself on it i mean that's big oh dude and he fucking all he cared about he would silk that bitch up he had more facial hair than his fat than his father and he fucking loved that bitch and he would buy liquor he, he would buy probably two thousand dollars worth of alcohol on the weekend i can't believe it people didn't be like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> you look like abraham lincoln <laughs> <laughs> Just the eighteen year old <laughs> Abraham Lincoln just yeah. buying all the booze, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he really he almost dressed like him too a little bit. He started to kind of live the the vibe. Yeah. Um, what was that guy's question? It was uh, how old was I oh, yeah, when yeah. my voice, voice dropped? dropped? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a? Is there a like a kind of a, a crazy movie or something that you were almost in that we don't know about? That like, I was were you almost, almost Aquaman or something. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I could see you being a murderer. I would like to be something like that. Bro, you could fucking murder somebody, dude. <laughs> <You know? laughs> see? <laughs> In a movie, yeah. I would love I would love to play like a crazy, you know, maniac. Fucking killer. Yeah. I'm talking about I could see somebody just hiding under the fucking floorboards listening to somebody sleep for a month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm talking dark arts, bro. Yeah. You could do it. I think you could do it, man. Do you were do you, have you noticed as your career's pres uh progressed that you've started to have bigger dreams almost and bigger ambitions? Has that been something? That's something I notice sometimes like fuck, I, I hope I one day I'll be able to do this and then once you're doing that, you're like, well shit, maybe I could do this, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm still, I'm still like, like I would like to have, you know, a production company that like I can just kind of do whatever I want with and make, I mean, I just want to be able to creatively do whatever I want to do. That's, yeah. That's just the goal. And I'm like, um, I'm at a point where like I've been able to do like the show was like creatively like a lot of freedom. Um and I just want to keep doing things like that and hopefully hopefully get a version of what I had on my YouTube channel on the much larger scale. Yeah. Where it's more of like a, I don't know, like a mini studio almost where we can just pump out like movies or shows or whatever I want to make. That what would are, be the goal. What are some of your strongest skills do you notice for yourself? Like have you... Um. I, I think I'm I'm good at um just like understanding like where other people are coming from in, in situations I guess. Like I don't know. I, I'm that wasn't a good way to phrase what I was trying to say at all. Right. But That's the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean I, I think uh like even as an entertainer kind of or yeah or as a because i start to notice like oh as i get a little bit older i start to notice you know oh these are skills that i'm actually having fucking some of these skills i thought i have i do not have you know really <clears> that might be kind of a vague question um let's take no, another a one good question i gotta work on a, i gotta work on a better answer to that question yeah i think i'm uh, i notice that i need more help from people than i realize a lot of times i don't like to give i like to be more controlling even though the truth is that i can't do things all by myself right so it's like kind of like um you know just recognizing that um you know my opinion isn't always the best one in the room even though like there's something in my head that wants to tell me that it is you know yeah um i'm a better creator than i am an organizer like i'm more cre on the creative side um and I shouldn't have a dog right now. Those are <laughs> kind of things I've learned about myself. There's a lot of mature realizations that you got there. Some of those, dude. I mean, I'm fucked, bro. You know, <laughs> I can't do cocaine right now. You know, <laughs> so, so that's that. Let's take one hey, more. Hey, this is man, uh, calling in for uh, for Jimmy. I uh, just had a question on how he linked up with um, all those guys from uh, Rib Boys of Sumner Valley. Like Cody Co and the Kingera, because I know that they were on fine, but I don't remember Jimmy being on there, and I, I've been watching all those guys for a while. Um, so the dudes from Real Bros are seeing Duncan. Valley. Duncan, who plays Duncan? Duncan is a guy named Nick Coletti. Okay. Um, is there a Griffin on the show? It's a total no, Simi Valley bro name. Griffin I feel like. is a good name. No. Griffin. It's Griffin, Xander, Duncan, and Wade. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, 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 not Griffin. Sorry, 
it's Xander, Wade, Duncan, and Bryce. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> those are the good. those are the four men, Bryce. <laughs> Bryce. Yeah, and then and then like the uh, and then you meet another group of bros, Yonder. <laughs> no. Yeah, I came up with the name Yonder at at <laughs> at lunch one time, and I was like, oh my god, I gotta put this in yeah, something. Dude. Yeah, I was like, Yonder, <laughs> yeah. that's so good. <laughs> yeah. so, like, the other squad is it's Yonder. And he like the guy's like like yonder that's your name and he's like yeah yonder like yo yonder that's a sick truck over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were gonna. <laughs> I bet Pixel will be one next. Pixel seems like a girl. That's name a good maybe one. one day. I love great fictional names. Yeah, we got a we we added a a, a John Irwin to John Irwin. No, Jono. Yeah, John is good. Jono, Johnny. Uh. <laughs> Piss Johansson's a good name. <laughs> you know? I love like like a good full name. That's what I think they did so well on Vandal was these fictional names like Declan Maniscalco, <laughs> Pat Mickleway, <laughs> uh Duncan Fairchild. Yeah. Like all these fake names. I was like, I don't know how you guys come up with these, but they're brilliant. Yeah. But the dudes on Real Bros, I knew through a couple of them I had I had heard of from Vine. Remember Vine? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, you know, yeah, Chris Lee is a friend of mine. He's a big Vine star. <laughs> <laughs> he, he hates I mean, that, a, huh? I don't know if he does. I mean, I think he might now, but he's, I mean, he any medium he takes on, he's just a conqueror, you know? Yeah, I just, I because I, I started to hate it when I like, I, I started making Vines just like for fun. Like, yeah. Before people started editing them and shit. Yeah. And then people would start coming to me and be like, yo, you're that guy from Vine. And I was like, oh, no, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's a grape yeah but these guys i had heard of from vine and they were like i mean i thought vine got to the point where like i hated like everything on vine yeah but i thought always thought these guys were funny and the two dudes on it were the guys who did like those shot it those videos saw it yeah saw it saw it yeah uh-uh. that's pretty much you know that's the, it the I'll gist it. of it but we <laughs> so i don't know I, what it is i had invited like saying, them what's to up come. dude like uh, saw dude saw it yeah, oh yeah quick easy but uh we'd had them do another video so i met him like through that and then the other guy cody i'd had do like a i used to do a drunk questions which is kind of like what we're doing now except like drinking right and then posting it on youtube oh yeah which you know maybe you shouldn't maybe not the best idea <laughs> yeah probably not <laughs> yeah. That's still so brave though yeah i'd post it and i'd be like oh man it's way too much info yeah oh definitely dude i mean i'm crying in half of the videos that we have up <laughs> um but it is interesting that it's like yeah there's so much more freedom when you're first starting out and then it starts to not the freedom but it, everything it does start to change a little bit like with twitter like i used to be down to tweet whatever oh yeah you know, i'd be like i'll fucking tweet <clears throat> you know that's a funny thought i'll tweet yeah. that i don't care how people oh, yeah. think about it and now it's like well there's a lot of people that are going to see this so maybe i shouldn't say that maybe it could be perceived the wrong way yeah and also that twitter's become a place where people go to find a quote that just matches anything that they want to prove. So it's like, oh yeah, uh, you know, Dragon Hickey Nine <laughs> got so pissed at, uh, you know, at Trump or at Hillary, and you're like, well, who gives a fuck who that person is? Yeah. You know, it's just like it's just a place they can go to almost find anything they want. Yeah, you know, it's um, concerning. Yeah, it's fucking concerning, dude. I'm hoping the aliens come <laughs> and they're down the fuck. You know what's <laughs> crazy about aliens coming is I fully experienced an alien invasion like yeah in hindsight i'm aware that it wasn't an alien invasion okay doesn't but sound at, like it <laughs> at the time mm -hmm. i was i experienced the feelings do you remember when spacex launched that oh, rocket yeah. i had no idea that was happening yeah and all of a sudden we see all these people outside we're in starbucks oh my god Oh my God! Like the sounds of like what it sounds like in movies when an alien invades. Yeah, we go outside. Everyone's filming the sky, and there's this massive, like, colorful cloud, and these sh these two things that are just. My friend kept saying these plumes. <laughs> <laughs> He's like these plumes of plasma. <laughs> 
and we're oh freaking god. out we're like oh my god it's 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 happening we're running we're like filming this thing and like another thing sprouts from it it was like there was a lot going on in the sky did y'all think it was the lord or you thought it was all science? i thought we it was a full-on like i thought it was arrivals like the, yeah. the movie i thought that was happening and and you know, a guy was like, you got to see the video I took. And his video was crazier. I'm like, like, fuck your video and it's still in the sky. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you got to you gotta send me that. Yeah. I'm thinking like, I'm going to be sending this to CNN. It's yes. going to be a huge deal. The aliens are invading. And I thought like. Wow. And obviously now, you know, it makes sense. It was oh. SpaceX. Oh, shit. People got in accidents on the freeway. That's what this video is showing <laughs> as it went. But that is a weird thing in the sky. And then that, that but, light started expanding. Banding. yeah you can see it right there it looks almost like a coffin or something shaped and my honest thought was i thought that that itself might have been the alien i thought the alien might have been coming in cloud form or something right i was freaking out some new thing that we can't handle yeah yeah like, we don't know <laughs> and what was your plan how what was your next move gonna be i don't know we were running towards it i was like i was just interested i just wanted to like I don't know. But did you start thinking like, oh, do I have a sword? Do I have like my phone charged? Like, did you have any? I was just, my mind was just racing. I just don't even know. I wasn't thinking of solutions. I was just, I think it was just pure interest in yeah. what is this? It's an alien for sure. Yeah. We got to check this out. Fuck. And you know, it was crazy because like I said, I, you know, like I feel like I, ex like I had the real feelings that I would have felt. Oh wow! That's, you know yeah, I mean? so you, the, yeah, you got all that natural reaction. Yeah, like it was like I had the feeling of oh fuck, th this is an this alien. Is it. It's happening. This is what I'm wearing. So, yeah, <laughs> the, and we were oh. both looking like it's happening, dude. I can't believe this. This is it. Yeah, and now it was you know. Did it have the feeling that so so if you get that that feeling when the aliens come, was it the kind of thing you were cool? It was fun to be with your boys for, or would it have been something cool for, to be with like a chick, like on a date? I was. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was I was with like my best friend, so it seemed like a pretty. It was a good situation. Yeah. I mean, I just I don't know. Like I said, I wasn't like I wasn't thinking like what what's my plan. Right. It was just fuck. It was just more of a. I was in awe that it it was happening. Like we did it. Did you feel like that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I was I was just I was like I don't know. Are they? I thought they were like firing. Yeah. Because it looked it was a rocket, you know, and stuff was shooting off of it and. Elon's really got to do a better job of telling us that that's happening. Yeah, something. He should definitely uh, spruce it up a little bit. Yeah, cars are crashing on the freeway. Dude, I, I feel you. <laughs> you know, it's just different times, man. I'm ready for an alien. I'm ready for the Lord. I'm ready for fucking quicksand, bro. <laughs> quicksand. I'll do whatever. I thought quicksand was going to be a much, much more, uh, what's the word, prevalent problem? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I thought twins were going to be everywhere when I was young. Twins? <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. One summer, they had two sets of twins that moved to our town, and I was like, oh, my fucking God, dude. There's going to be so many fucking extra people in the future. I thought so many more twins were like being made <laughs> in the world, and my whole concept was just like, fuck. Did you have any quicksand? Were you? I mean, where are you from? You're from the south? I'm from Louisiana. Yeah, I'm from Louisiana, and they had... We had a lot of sinkholes growing up. You know, I grew up in the sinkhole belt, I guess, whatever that is, basically a ravine. Um, but they used to test kids. You could get a job, do five bucks an hour. They'd hook this thing on you and hook a thing. You'd walk out into a field and see if you'd fucking fall in. And they, you'd be out there all day working with like a, um, not landscapers, what are they called? The government's landscapers. Oh, uh, uh, like a Caltrans or? No, that's not Caltrans. Um, I don't know, but yeah, something we don't know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you'd walk out in the field and they'd be like, "Fucking walk a little more," you know. <laughs> that be like, keep risky. fucking walking, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We're splitting a beer. Keep walking. We got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that'd be it. They tie you off and they'd be like, "Fucking walk in a big circle, man. See if you fucking hit anything." You know. <laughs> you were like, you were like, uh, kind of like a metal detector, but the metal was falling into the earth you know right and so if you hit a sinkhole and you fucking went down you know you're like all right you know <laughs> pull me back one. up yeah <laughs> well we're gonna need some sod you know <laughs> so that was it man that was kind of like a fun thing you could do when i was growing up that's quick know? sandy yeah it's kind of quick sandy but that's the most i ever saw but yeah i thought it was gonna be a lot bigger they had a do bus who tried to make it i remember for a while and sell it to people <laughs> quick sand yeah <laughs> like i've 
your own quicksand. Yeah, and he couldn't do it. The quicksand box. <laughs> and he couldn't do it, dude, and they shut him down. Are your kids bored with their normal sandbox? Yeah, yeah. The quicksand box. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Set them in, never see them again. <laughs> yeah, where's Lawrence? <laughs> Who knows? And it's like it almost it just keeps coming back up, kind of regurgitating. Oh, there yeah, goes yeah. the castle. <laughs> um, any other good questions? We're good? I think we're good. Okay. Uh, so we need to check out your new show for the people that haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Real Bros of Simi Valley. Yeah. Facebook Watch. Facebook Watch. And um, yeah. And I have a show with Dan Lagana too, that we're trying to make. A what? I have a show with Dan Lagana too, that we're trying really? to make. Yeah. What is, uh, can you tell me anything about it? Some of the best fucking man win. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, well. Uh, um, We actually just tried to get information out of you. That's why we brought you here. We're trying to hear all about your pilot. God damn it. It's just about, you know, it's about a young fella down on his luck, you know? Mm -hmm. Just basically looking for an edge, man. Looking to get ahead, you know? And he's got, uh, you know... He might, he might have done some different, you know, some poor ideas and this and that. So pretty vague. Um, yeah, he's keeping it way more vague than me. Yeah, he's getting yeah, all the bro. info out of me. It's obviously a undeveloped idea. Mm. You know what I have, I think. Well, that's what Dan Lagan is for. Oh, a vague off, huh? Well, you want to have a, a vague, vague off? off? Well, I was somewhere. Yeah, my show is based on something to do with me. Yeah, it happened, um, sometime. <laughs> How vague. I'm actually meeting up with Lagana after this. Oh, oh, are you? So I'm getting a little <laughs> oh, Well, Lagana's on FaceTime right <laughs> now. Well, I'm texting him right now. <laughs> um, well, dude, thanks for all the entertainment and all the humor, man. Dude, thanks for, thanks for having me. This has been a good time. You know, a lot of times I go on podcasts and, uh, I leave feeling like I said way too much. Yeah. But I think, I think, you know, I didn't, I don't think I said too much. Oh, no. No one's. I think I said enough. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you dug yourself. Oh, you might have dug yourself some quicksand. You know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That was a pretty gay ending. Um, But no, nothing we've said could be worse than Gianni's fucking laugh that is from the 1500s. From 1500 uh, Europe, from the Titanic. Uh, um, That's it, man. That's all I got. Hey, man. It's a good time. Dude, thanks for coming and hanging out, man. Yeah, man. It was great to meet you. Yeah, you're so funny, bro. And thank you for, uh, for stopping in and... Um, you know, we'll definitely check out the show. Yeah, and thanks, tell man. everybody to check it out. A lot of creepy fucking dudes listen to this podcast. So yeah, yeah, and I'm sure they got time to kill. So, and people, yeah, and people, and I'm one of those creepy dudes. So, uh, Jimmy Tatro, thank you so much, man. Thanks, man. Yep. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it in my bones, but it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all my